Oxyfuel cutting is a process commonly used to shape a wide variety of parts used in the metalworking industry. As the majority of these parts will be welded at a later time, it's important to obtain the highest possible quality in the cutting process. The operator must have a thorough knowledge of the cutting process, a complete mastery of the machine, the gases, nozzles, materials, and settings. Because it's only in this way that the best cutting results, the fastest cutting speed, and the highest profitability are obtained. By combining oxygen with a high energy fuel gas, we can actually make steel burn. What we refer to as oxyfuel cutting is in reality a combustion process. Oxyfuel cutting is widespread. Steel plate of any thickness from 3 millimeters up to 300 millimeters can be cut using basically the same type of cutting equipment. Most gas cutting, however, as a matter of fact, over 90% of all oxyfuel machine cutting is done on materials which are less than 20 millimeters thick. Oxyfuel cutting is used to cut mild steels and low alloy steels. Despite such innovations as plasma arc and laser cutting, oxyfuel cutting is one of the most common methods due to its versatility. There are many different types of cutting machines on the market. Everything from small machines with only one torch to large production machines equipped with up to eight torches. Depending on how the machine is equipped, one can perform straight cuts, as well as complicated figure cuts. Many types of automatic systems are used for figure cutting, such as optical reading and numerically operated models. CAD CAM systems, where the cutting machine can be programmed already in the design department. There are also automatic systems which employ robots, in this case for bevel cutting objects. The heart of the cutting machine is the nozzle. This is where the cutting process begins. This is where the machine, the gases, and the operator's skill all converge where all our preparation and knowledge is transformed into concrete results. The preheat flame produced in the cutting nozzle heats the steel to ignition temperature. In order for the steel to ignite, we must subsequently add a jet of pure oxygen, which initiates and maintains the combustion process. The oxygen passes under high pressure through the center of the nozzle, this is called the cutting oxygen jet. When ignited, iron combines with the oxygen to form iron oxide, or slag. The high pressure oxygen jet blows the slag away from the cut. The preheat flame has more than one function. Besides bringing and keeping the material at ignition temperature, it protects the oxygen jet and burns away impurities from the plate surface. The nozzle is fitted to the cutting torch. The primary functions of the torch is to mix the fuel gas and oxygen for the preheat flame and to supply oxygen to the cutting oxygen jet. A torch may be more or less sophisticated, technically speaking. It all depends on the particular design and make of the torch. In this type of torch, for example, there's a special spiral injector to counteract backfire in the torch. It's also equipped with large heat sink blocks surrounding the gas lines for the same reason. 
The torch can also be equipped with a flow valve, which provides the cutting nozzle with cooling oxygen during preheating. Not only does this serve to increase the life of the cutting nozzle, but it also prevents unnecessary work interruptions due to nozzle clogging. The torch and nozzle can't do their job properly unless the gas supply lines to the cutting machines are in good working order. Most cutting shops have a central gas system where fuel gas and oxygen are supplied from a central station located outside the building. Gas is delivered to small quantity consumers in cylinder bundles while large consumers can take advantage of liquid oxygen from a stationary tank. It's very important that the tube system which leads the gases to the cutting tools is installed by a certified worker. Oxygen used in cutting requires a purity of at least 99.5%. It's not uncommon for poorly installed tube systems to add impurities to the gas, causing problems. Should you have problems with cutting quality or continued downtime, contact your gas supplier to check the distribution system. We have now examined the oxyfuel cutting process and obtained some idea of the type of equipment we need. Now, let's take a closer look at some of the factors that affect cutting. Just what is it that makes a perfect cut? A perfect cut must have sharp edges. Slag that is easily removed or no slag at all, and a smooth regular surface with almost vertical drag lines. There are many different reasons for defective cuts. Aga's handbook shows you many of the possible causes, but the quickest and safest way of making a perfect cut is to get all the basic adjustments right before you begin. If you follow the checklist in the handbook, the chances of making a defective cut are very small. First, we check the machine. The plate on the cutting table must be level so that we maintain the same nozzle distance at all points on the surface. The proper nozzle is chosen depending on the thickness of material. The particular type of cutting to be done is also a factor. The correct nozzle is listed in the cutting table. Once we've attached the nozzle to the torch, we check to see that the torch maintains the correct working angle. The correct nozzle to work distance is very important for satisfactory cutting results. Refer to the cutting table for the perfect distance. A height setting gauge simplifies this operation. It's important to calibrate the machine's speed gauge. Incorrect cutting speed is a common cause for defective cuts. First, we set the speed on our machine at, let's say, 500 millimeters per minute. We run the machine for exactly one minute. We check the length of the cut. We do this for both lengthwise and crosswise cuts. A tolerance of plus minus 5% is acceptable. For the most economical cutting, we must understand how cutting costs are distributed. In order to obtain a clear comparison, we'll calculate the cost per cut meter. This is how the cutting costs per cut meter are divided. Labor and machine costs constitute 90% of the total expenses. 
only 10% represent the cost of gas. But how can we improve cost efficiency? Any increase in cutting speed will quickly improve cost efficiency. This can be done by using a modern curtain nozzle, for instance. We can save considerable time when piercing using forced preheating. Bevel cutting using several torches at the same time also increases cost efficiency. In addition to steps taken to increase cutting speed, it's important to minimize all operating expenses. This machine has the cutting table at floor level, making loading and unloading fast and easy. There's no downtime due to material loading. Stops in production are also avoided with systems employing double movable tables. One advantage with this system is that it requires less workspace. But this also means that metal handling has to be well organized. A thought through metal handling system can optimize the profitability of a cutting department. When working with combustible gases, the risk of accidents is ever present. The machine operator must always be on the alert and check his equipment regularly for safety. Fuel gas leakage can cause serious accidents. Propane and thermaline are heavier than air and can collect on the floor or flow down into low areas where they can cause explosions or fires. The strong smell of acetylene and thermaline warn us of leakage but by the time we become aware of it, it may be too late. This is why you must check your equipment carefully. A visual inspection reveals hoses which have begun to dry out and become dangerous. All hoses dry out with the passage of time and must be replaced sooner or later. In order to effectively capture the smoke and fumes that are released during the cutting, it's essential that the cutting table be equipped with a fume extraction system. Leaks, even small ones, can be detected using leak detection spray. Don't forget to put pressure in the hose when testing. By installing safety equipment, we can prevent flashbacks. Check valves must be installed. They prevent gas from flowing in the wrong direction and creating explosive mixtures in the hoses. Check valves must be present on all three hoses. Flashback arresters should be installed on the regulators. They prevent flashbacks and stop them from spreading into the gas cylinder or throughout the central gas system. Remember to install parallel flashback arresters if several torches are being used. For your own sake, never neglect personal safety. Flame-proof overalls, protective goggles, safety helmets and ear protection are just a few of the items that should always be worn. Regardless of the quality of materials, the advanced technology, and our research and development, one of the most vital ingredients to a company's success hinges on the skill and knowledge of its operators. AUGA is much more than just a gas supplier. An active customer service built on continuous research and development combined with training programs designed to transfer know-how to the customer have been a hallmark of AUGA for years. At AUGA, you'll get the help you need when you need it. Your continued success is our future.